we've been talking about Justice Rehnquist and your interaction with him. Curious about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, recently in the news because she's now cancer-free, a four-time cancer survivor, second female justice to be named after Sandra Day O'Connor, along with Sonia Sotomayor and Alina Kagan. And she's now 86 years old, and her health has been an issue for some time and in the news. So I'm hoping you had some interaction with her. I did. She was one of the 11 women that President Jimmy Carter appointed to the Federal Courts of Appeals, the group I was in. Most of us were appointed in 1979. She came in in, I think, early 1980. So I met her. I met all the women when we had judicial conferences in Washington. She was always kind of shy. This is an interesting point. Each Circuit Court of Appeals has a circuit justice from the Supreme Court appointed And that justice comes to our judicial conferences each year and whatever else we can get them to do. When I went on the court, Justice White was our circuit justice. And then I think it was Steve Breyer after that. Ruth Ginsburg was appointed our circuit justice in 1994. She came to our judicial conference. It happened to be that year that my first female colleague on the court, Danielle Taha, who was a really fun person, she and a federal district judge in Colorado created a play for the judges to put on at the judicial conference, and it was called Phantom of the Courthouse. (laughs) And it was very funny from beginning to end. One of the things that they came up with for us women judges, and I think there were only four of us at the time, Danelle and I and two district court judges, we were to do a striptease by taking off our black robes. We were up on the stage with our judicial robes on. They were playing bump and grind music. And we were up there slowly unzipping our robes to bump and grind music. And, of course, his lawyers and judges at this judicial conference, they thought it was hysterical, except for Justice White, who was sort of scandalized. But Ruth was sitting there next to him, and she saw us start, and she got up and came up on the stage with us. She didn't have a robe on, but she was standing up there sort of moving around and bumping and grinding with us as we, we were doing that's just an interesting side of her that you don't usually see because she actually is a fairly shy person. She had a very outgoing husband, Marty Ginsburg, who was terrific. But and it's interesting about her because she's often first to ask a question. Yes, that's yet- different. She's in her role. Yeah. I mean, she was a fabulous teacher at law school before she went on the court. When she's in her role, she's fine. It's just her personality. Yeah. So you and Tom, your husband, did you have interaction with her and her husband? We did. When we went to D.C. for something, they invited us over for dinner. We had dinner with them in Washington. I think it was the year after. And she did all the cooking? No, (laughs) she didn't do any of the cooking. (laughs) Marty Ginsburg was a fabulous cook. He loved to cook. He said that at one point he and the kids threw her out of the kitchen because she wasn't a very good cook and she wasn't very interested in it. I think probably when she went on the Supreme Court. She probably quit cooking. Yeah. There is actually a cookbook out with Marty Ginsburg's recipes that the Supreme Court put out after he died. Then he was quite oh, a cook. Oh, he was, he was a brilliant tax lawyer, but he was also a terrific cook and a very laid-back guy. He carried in his suit pocket a small flask of Campari, which is what she liked to drink. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he took care of her. Yeah. She obviously represents the liberal wing of the party, but when she came on, was she more moderate, do you think? Things have just changed. You know, the law progresses, so it changes over time. I can't remember. I think she was always leaning in that direction. Well, she spent a good part of her career in the advancement of gender yes. equality and yes. women's rights. Yes. Which was right up your alley. Yeah. And well, you were the same way. It was at a time when that was changing. So you were often first. She was, as we pointed out, the second female justice. She had to be a lot of first female on her walk. Oh, I'm sure she was. On her walk. And actually, she and I were up for consideration for that Supreme Court position when she got it. You were too? Mm Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. It actually was publicized somewhere, yeah. I wasn't pushing for it because I didn't want it. Her husband was campaigning for her. I forbid my husband to campaign for me because I liked being here and... I don't like publicity interfering in my life. I hate all of that. So I really didn't want it. Your name was selected by? Well, it was put out there by Clinton and the administration. 
So were you one of two or many? or? Some? I have no idea. All I know is what I read in the paper. <laughs> right. But probably relieved that you didn't get it. Absolutely. But, but a nice honor to have been considered. Yes. Well, there were so few of us women out there that... It limited the pool. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of them were older, so... Right. But what a compliment. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. 